Hi, everyone. I'm Henry DeVries. Welcome to this episode of Agency Rainmaker TV. A very special guest from my past, Dr. George Belch, otherwise known as Joe Belch. Uh, Joe, so good to see you. Um, tell us, what are you going to talk about as far as the state of the advertising industry for these small to mid-sized agencies? Well, several things, Henry. I mean, one, I think it's always helpful to kind of look at where the industry is right now uh, and what, what's happening with it. And then what are some specific things that these agencies might do to attract more clients? I mean, business development is really critical. You know, new business, new clients are the lifeblood of any company. And just like new products if, are the lifeblood of a firm. And I think it's really important to be focusing on this area. So for the viewers, Dr. Belch, is the uh, Professor Emeritus of Marketing. He's the former uh, Dean of the Fowler College of Business at San Diego State University. He's the co-author of one of the leading textbooks in business schools when it comes to advertising and marketing. And that's uh, the, uh, oh, I gotta get the name right. I, I have it on my shelf. Um, it's the uh, Advertising and Promotion and Integrated Marketing Communications Perspective. So uh, he's written for many journals. He has a background, uh, undergrad Penn State. I just went to the uh, Rose Bowl and saw your, your uh, alums out there in fine form. Uh, got his master's at the University of uh, Colorado. Um, which I believe has a new exciting football coach, if I'm they not do. mistaken. They yeah. do. And then a PhD from uh, UCLA. So uh, great background and uh, worked in the industry, worked for DuPont uh, on the agency side. He was a research analyst for DDB Worldwide. Uh, so certainly has his chops there. Um, well, let's talk about that. What are the best ways with your experience and research for agency owners to invest in business development? Well, you know, one, Henry, it sounds obvious, but you really have to understand what's happening in the business. Um, you know, we have just spent the last several months updating our textbook, creating the 13th edition of it. And that forces you to really dig into everything really deeply, to be reading the ad weeks and the advertising age and the Wall Street Journal, the Forbes, the Fortunes, uh, just everything, uh, blogs uh, about what's going on. And some of these developments are obvious. I mean, we know it's becoming a digital world. We know that uh, digital uh, media budgets are now surpassing traditional media budgets. And so clearly that has an implication that you have to have expertise now in digital for the most part. It's really hard to go out and just say, we can create great print ads for you when no one really wants print ads. Uh, that doesn't mean that these traditional media are dead, uh, but it does mean that marketers are, are going a different way. Um, it does mean though that some of those uh, things that we would do in print or television, video, you know, video is still very, very dominant. And so we have to be able to uh, take advantage of uh, our capabilities in those particular areas and figuring out how what we do lines up with what our clients really want. Um, you know, I think an important thing, and it sounds obvious, but is to determine what type of agency are you? I mean, sit down with your team and say, who are we really? I mean, what, what is our capabilities? What is our area of expertise? Um, you know, are we more of a traditional agency where we want to focus on creative and we still want to do some of the media planning, some of the PR things? Uh, are we more of a specialist agency? I, I mentioned digital more and more. We're seeing a lot the, you know, the growth of digital agencies where they focus on uh, you know creating websites. They focus on SEO, uh, pay per click type advertising, content marketing. They're really focused on all those different digital tools, um, and they're saying that's the capability we're going to bring to the game. Um, are we going to be more? Uh, even narrowly focused? Are we going to pick a, an even narrower niche? Or maybe we want to step back a little broader and say, maybe we're a little more of a marketing communications consultancy. Um, so you have to ask yourself, what do we want to do? Where do we want to play? Um, and what are the capabilities that we really have that allow us to do that? Um, 
what you don't want to do is go out and be writing checks that you can't really cash with your capabilities. You can't be going out and promising you can do things unless perhaps you could partner with someone else and develop some type of relationships that will allow you to do that. Um, so, you know, that's one thing you have to ask yourself. And then I think you also have to think about what is our niche? It's very difficult to be a broad-based marketer today. Uh, and I don't mean just in the agency business. I mean, anybody in marketing, even if you have a broad product or service line, you're still going to have individual brands or divisions that are focused on, on niches. And I think particularly for smaller mid-sized agencies, uh, it's very difficult to compete with the big agencies that are owned by the big holding companies. Uh, you know, that's been a major change that we've seen now. Interestingly enough, it's not only the big holding companies, but now we've had the big uh, consultancies pop into the game. Uh, Accenture and uh, IBM and uh, Pricewaterhouse, PwC, they now have digital capabilities. One of the largest agencies is uh, uh, Accenture Song, uh, which really is a, a division of uh, the Accenture consulting firm. Of course, they made an interesting strategic move recently because they went out and bought Droga 5, who is one of the leading creative agencies, an independent agency. So what that tells you is that these big guys are trying to improve their creative capabilities as well. But I think you have to ask yourself, is there a niche that we can play in? I mean, if I'm really small, maybe what I have to do is say, I want to work with other startups. I want to work with entrepreneurial firms. Uh, my son has a startup company in the virtual reality space. Um, he needs capabilities, marketing communication capabilities. He uses PR agencies. He uses advertising agencies. Uh, he doesn't spend a ton of money on uh, advertising and marketing communications, but he has needs in that particular area. So you have to ask yourself, are there startups or are there e-commerce firms? Maybe we pick a niche like healthcare. Uh, we look at the nonprofit space. We look at specific industries uh, where we can really specialize. I mean, keep in mind, once you get ingrained more into a particular industry, you become an expert there. You get to know it. You can transfer that knowledge. You can transfer some of the capabilities uh, uh, you have from uh, in, in that particular space. So uh, I, I think finding that particular niche is important uh, and saying, what's the one that we really do want to focus on? You know, another thing too, um, think about, look at yourself as a client for a second. Uh, you know, what you want to do is you want to, you might say, who's our ideal client? Um, and could we develop like a, what we call a consumer persona of that ideal client? Um, you know, this is something that more and more companies are doing, but could we develop that persona, that profile of that ideal client? What are their pain points? What do we bring to the table? What is our value proposition that we can offer to them that's, help point, that's going to help solve their problems? And then sometimes I think it's good to sit back and say, you know what, let's take that skill set, that expertise we have, and apply it to ourselves. Think about it. What you're doing, you're going and you're pitching yourself all the time and you're working for clients and you're trying to help market them. But could you take that same skill sets, the same things you do for your clients, and sometimes just have that retreat or whatever and say, how would we apply them to our own business? What could we do to market ourselves more effectively? Uh, and that could be very enlightening, I think, for, for an agency. Um, you know, I, I remember years ago, I was doing a marketing seminar. And before we started, I said, are there any questions before we start? And there was a gentleman in the audience. He said, yeah, I have a question. And he said, are you going to teach us the seven secrets of marketing? And I'm sitting there saying to myself, oh boy, I've been doing this for 30 years, teaching, doing seminars for companies, consulting, whatever, writing books. Man, I don't know seven secrets. So I was you know, kind of thinking for a second. And I said, no, I'm not going to teach you the seven secrets. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to teach you the one secret. 
And I'd ask all your viewers to stop for a second and think, well, what's the answer or what is the one secret? Um, and I walked up to the board and I just wrote, marketing is hard work. Because it is, it is. If you think about it, 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 on the surface, it sounds common sense, it sounds easy. But when you think about what we're trying to do for our clients, what we're trying to do for ourselves, whatever, to market, there's a lot to do. There is a lot to do. It's one thing to have plans, but then you have to execute. You have to implement them. Uh, you know, how many times do we create great strategic plans and they sit on a shelf and then when you talk to someone about executing well yeah we'll get to that we'll get to that or right now we don't have the people to execute it well what what's the value of that plan it's collecting dust on your shelf if, if you really can't execute it um so i i say this because you don't want to get frustrated i mean you just want to sit back and say this is hard work it takes a lot day in day out to do the strategic things, to do the tactical things, to go out and acquire customers, to retain those customers, to keep them happy, to keep them loyal, uh, to guard against them defecting. Um, you know, one of the things in the agency world is uh, people leave agencies and you have to sit there and look and say, well, why do they leave? Um, Sometimes there are things beyond your control. I've worked with some smaller agencies that have worked for big companies like Coca-Cola, and they've done fantastic creative work. And then I see them later and I say, what happened? You, you're not doing it anymore. And they say, well, things changed at the company. They reorganized. They brought things in-house. Uh, you know, that's a trend, by the way, that we're seeing. Uh, more and more companies are developing in-house capabilities. And in many cases, it was originally with creative and it was a way of cost savings. Now they're even starting to bring media planning and buying in-house. Uh, so that's a, an important thing that we have to watch carefully. Um, what are the signs of any vulnerabilities we have in our client agency relationships? Uh, because if you worked hard to acquire those clients, uh, you know, we know it's much easier to uh, grow based and it's much more profitable to serve clients and to be constantly going out and chasing new business. Mm -hmm. So it's like the basic idea, what's the lifetime value of a, of a customer? There's a whole area of that. And what's the lifetime value of the clients that you have? So you want to hold on to them as long as you can. Um, but what that means, let's go back to getting that new business. Uh, you, you've got to understand the target audience you've identified. And uh, that means doing a lot of research sometimes to figure out what's going on with them. Um, you know, there's a lot of basic things as well. I mean, you sometimes have to get out of the office get from behind that desk, uh, build your offline presence, um, going out, networking. Um, doing seminars, becoming part of the local community, getting on the speaking circuit, um, guest speaking at universities. Those people, you speak to an MBA class. You were in my, in my MBA student many years ago. And think about it. I mean, you become a potential future uh, client. Uh, not for me, but for the agency person who might come in and do some guest speaking. And we know that Students love the guest speakers. Uh, they get tired of hearing from us, but they want to hear the real world. They want to hear who's actually out there doing it, not the professors who are up there spousing theories and, uh, you know, kind of uh, some of the pie in the sky things that they think we do. It's just flavor, Dr. Belch. We just wanted a little flavor with it. We, you, you provided the main course, the the yeah. the, uh, the protein and, and the good vegetables and carbs. Well, that's uh, a good way to describe it. You know, I, the guest speakers are great. Um, you know, I, I think too, you, know, you, you need to be obviously doing things offline, but of course you have to have a strong presence online. And I think what becomes important there for some of the things you could do in terms of things like content marketing, uh, blogging, uh, guest blogging. What are some of the things you can do to kind of establish yourself, your agency as a thought leader um, in, in the industry? I mean, white papers, other valuable content. Um, I think sometimes we put that out there and we think people don't read them, but they do. 
I download white papers all the time. Now I had a different interest because I love to see what's going on. I'm writing about it. Um, but you know, if you have valuable information, I don't think people are going to ignore it. There are people that have assignments and there are people who are saying, uh, what can I do to uh, improve my expertise in this particular area, to become more knowledgeable in that particular area. Um, as you're doing those things though, I think the important thing is to be focusing and showing how your agency solves problems for clients, because that's really at the end of the day, what they want. I mean, they're sitting there saying, who can come in here and really solve my problems or really do an excellent job of communicating, helping me communicate and uh, get my value proposition out there to my customers. Um, of course, having a great website is still important. People go there and uh, you want to know that um, you know, I'm going to judge you by that. I'm going to judge you. I mean, if you're the really large agency, I'm kind of surprised sometimes the big thing with some of the bigger agencies now is they, they seem to put it a little less up there. Um, you get a lot of white space and they put up you know, some of their work. Um, but I think if you're a smaller to mid-sized agency, it's great to highlight your work. It's also nice if you can show testimonials. If you can have a satisfied client uh, provide you with a testimonial and to tell you in that, to say in that testimonial what their problem was and how you solved it. Uh, again, because that comes back to that a problem solving approach. I mean, if you think about it, what are we as customers? We're, uh, you know, we're always looking for, for solutions to our problems, right? Um, and basically clients are no different. Um, it's not necessarily a problem per se, but it is that need to be able to go out there and have a strong presence on, on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, I've mentioned partnering before. Uh, Consider partnering. I mean, you may not have all the capabilities. I mean, you may not have PR capabilities, but could you partner with a PR firm? You may not have market research capabilities, uh, but could you work with a market research company or a consultant? Or if you don't have strong digital capabilities or SEO or PPC, could you find someone who might have that? Um, and so be, be open to those uh, partnerships um, if that is something that is viable and something that could help you. Um, you know, you still I'm want- I'm seeing that as a big trend right now for the small to mid-sized agencies to bring in, as you mentioned, if they don't have digital capability, that if they don't have um, research, we know a company audience audit and they come yep. in and they serve that market and do research for, for them. And a lot better than creating your own PR agency to bring in some PR specialists if that's called for. So partnering, uh, that's a great point. Yeah, um, I think it's a, it's a very viable solution because again, you sometimes can't really afford to you know, have all the resources that you need in those particular areas. Um, you know, the basic marketing tools, um, I mentioned content marketing and a lot of that you use effective email campaigns, the weekly newsletter um, that people see uh, that uh, has the catchy subject line, but also offers valuable content, uh, something that uh, tips or market updates, uh, things of that nature uh, that people might be inclined to open. Um, they might not open them all, but and, you know, if, if you can get a few hits in there, uh, it, it, it could lead Sounds to... Sounds like integrated marketing communications to me. Um, I learned that somewhere. So to your first point, it's a lot easier if you pick the, the niche or even go super niche. I mean, we were niched on consultants and professional services for years until I said the super niche I want to be in is uh, advertising digital and PR agencies. And when I made that commitment to that, then I can not only speak the language, I can speak the dialect of, of the prospect. And the authority marketing that you advocate that we started to do really started to click because they felt it was to them, directly to them. 
Um, now, we mentioned the waterfront, you know, a thousand and one ways to get business, and that's the problem. There are a thousand and one ways to do business development. What are you seeing is the best return on investment? Where should they be investing their money these days if you had to prioritize? Uh, I would probably be doing it in the digital space uh, somewhere. I would probably be working uh, through some of the social media sites, the LinkedIn's, making sure I'm really mastering that, doing the content marketing, um, you know, making sure that I'm uh, up to date on all the directories. I mean, getting myself listed, being everywhere. Um, I, I would be focusing attention there. You know, one thing too is, uh, you, Invest your time and effort sometimes in having people who are beating the bushes a little bit, looking out there for RFPs. You know, the request for proposals um, can be a viable option. The return there is pretty high. The opportunity to bid on an RFP, if you do a good proposal um, that outlines your capabilities, that does a good job of demonstrating how your agency meets the criteria, providing examples of past work you've done. Um, don't just respond to it, invest in it. You get some good time in it. Um, again, that, that's something that I think can be very helpful as well. Uh, but it, it's probably online. But again, um, I think I would be trying to spend some time offline. Um, building those relationships, going out, getting known in the community, um, getting known in the industry, that's going to be important as well. Something we're finding is when everybody zigs, it pays to zag. Like you said, if everybody's going online, uh, be the person who actually goes to the target rich environment where those prospects, the right fit prospects that you've identified do gather so you can be there. Also, if everybody's going digital, uh, direct mail, the lumpy direct mail is coming back where it's something that'll get noticed and, and opened. And um, it's, it's all these things you do for attention. W what would you advise though to stop spending money on? What are you thinking like, well, oh, you could be wasting your money this way. You know, you, I think you, you would probably have to be careful about running ads for your agency, whatever, in, in areas where um, you, you don't have a good chance of getting noticed. Um, probably the bigger publications, it's getting a little more difficult. Um, you, you can go in there, but you're going to get lost in the clutter. Um, so I think, I think what you really broad focus techniques are probably not going to give you the same return on investment as things that are more narrowly focused and more targeted. In my study of the top 10 investments to make, um, advertising finishes 10th, but it was to your point, the money should be spent on being in directories so you can be found. I always said it's an irony when I interviewed people on Madison Avenue, none of them got there by advertising how great they were. Uh, they did all these other things you were talking about, uh, being an authority, uh, putting on the seminars, uh, getting published uh, in different publications that the clients read, uh, attending the client uh, prospect rich meetings, um, doing the online presentations, doing the workshops and seminars that you mentioned. Um, these fundamentals still apply with a digital overlay. So um, I think that's that's the good takeaway. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. This yeah. has been a very powerful episode. I appreciate you so much and uh, invite all our viewers to come back for another episode of Agency Rainmaker TV. Thanks.